But again, perhaps on a, on a less depressing note, it's been very interesting to hear you define the philosophy in quite overtly Aristotelian terms. Yeah. And I was curious, in speaking of morality, do you believe that ethical values are objective and universal? And if so, how can they be discerned in the Aristotelian or Thomist way, perhaps, on the basis of how they contribute to human flourishing or in a completely different fashion? No, I, I think that is the, the, basic, the basic approach has to be. It has to be, in a sense, an empirical approach, but based on first principles. And, uh, and, and, and I think they are objective. That is, I think that if you evaluate human history, if you look at individuals, if you look at human nature, and this is kind of the first principle approach, there are certain things that lead to human flourishing and there are certain things that, 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 that uh, retract from human flourishing uh, or lead to human happiness and retract from human happiness. And so the, the first principle is, one is individual human life is what matters. Morality is about my life. Morality is about your life. Your, my my uh, need to survive and to thrive. Your need to survive and to thrive. And then the second question is, and this is a, an important empirical question, but it's a foundational question. What leads to human thriving? What leads to human survival? Can we objectively show that there's something in particular that enhances human survival, never mind thriving? And if you look at the species over the last 100,000 years, there's one attribute that we have that defines who we are and defines our capacity to change the world around us, to make it livable for us. Because in nature, as an animal equal to all other animals, we're pretty pathetic. We're slow, we're weak, we have no claws, we have no fangs, I mean, you put yourself in front of a saber-toothed tiger and you lose, right? But the saber-toothed tiger is in a museum and you're here, in, in, you know, with communicating thousands of miles away by video conference in the comfort of our homes with air conditioning here, and even, in, even in the UK, probably some air conditioning. Um, and, and, and we're thriving as a species. There are billions of us. We, we, we live all over the world in every climate possible. How is any of that achievable? How did we beat the saber-toothed tiger? How did we hunt down the bison? How did we create? Well, it's only one thing, and that is the use of our mind. Reason is what defines us as a species. And reason is what allows us to survive as individuals. Without thinking, we cannot survive. Now, it's true, not everybody thinks. But those of us who drift on other people are drifting on other people's thinking. I didn't come up with the iPhone, but I benefit from the fact that, you know, Steve Jobs did. And I use my thinking to create something else, which then provides me with the income to be able to benefit from Steve Jobs' thinking. But at the end of the day, the way human beings survive, the way people thrive, the way people live as a human being, and even the way people can experience spiritual values is through the use of, and create spiritual values, is through the use of reason. You, you, you cannot write a symphony without being a thinker. It's not just that it just emotes out there. It's a process. And it's a, it's a process based at the end of the day on human reason. So reason is man's basic means of survival and reason is the foundation of any ethics. So the idea that reason is at the, at the base of human survival is not, it shouldn't be controversial. And that's an objective fact. So now the, so, so as an objective fact, now the issue is, so for Ayn Rand, if you had to boil ethics down to one idea, it's think. Think for yourself. So if you think about Ayn Rand developing virtues, actions that lead to values, moral actions, right, that lead to values, then her virtues are rationality, think, and all its implications. Independence, think for yourself. Honesty, don't allow falsehoods into your thinking because you're, your, you're corrupting your thinking. Um, justice. Think about the value of other people to your life and treat them accordingly. 
but it's think, are they good, are they bad? Evaluate, judge. So justice is about judging who is good and who is bad and treating them accordingly. Um, you know, uh, uh, produ uh, productiveness, right? You've got to create the material needs that your, your life requires. Your body requires for food, but also your spirit requires for everything else. Think and act, right? Produce. Production is thinking in action. And take all this seriously. L you know, uh, act based on what you think. Integrity. And finally, take morality seriously. I, Aristotle called pride the queen of the virtues. And it's true. Pride is the idea of taking morality seriously. It's living the best life you can live for yourself. All, every one of those can be objectively shown to contribute to human life, to contribute to survival and to thriving as an individual human being. So it's, it's, it's an it's a, um, a inductive truth. It's a truth that comes from the evidence of reality. And um, in that sense, it follows the Aristotelian tradition. I just think she, she had, was more rigorous. She had 2,000 years on Aristotle of human experience, of history, of an industrial revolution, of the Enlightenment, of, uh, uh, you know, of all the, of, of, of the negatives of Christianity and, and the negatives of altruism and, and, and other philosophers. She, and, and I think she improves on the, on the Aristotelian model. But the essential idea of the standard is individual, um, individual happiness, individual flourishing and thriving. And the means, reason, is, is very similar to Aristotelian to Aristotle. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.